We're going into tomorrow. Continue to be bullish, but I am keeping a very, very close uh, eye on Amazon, on Netflix, on Facebooks of the world. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com nightly wrap up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had a good uh, day of trading. Uh, Wall Street starts out lower uh, this morning. That's one of the things that we haven't seen in quite a while. Uh, when the futures usually uh, go down, you usually have a good value point to the upside. That's exactly what happened today, but it wasn't to the point of stocks were getting decimated. Um, if you look at majority of part of the day, you really didn't see that stocks weren't even participating to the upside. Uh, although the major averages were pretty much red across the board, you never got that sense that the market was actually down in the day. And unfortunately, a lot of people, they equate uh, momentum with um, kind of what's going on in the real world. And right now, we, you know, we're kind of involved in a very uh, fluid situation. Unless you've been kind of living under a rock, you kind of see what's going on with the Trump situation. Uh, the gr Democrats are trying to remove him uh, from office, um, you know, pretty aggressively. Um, there's, you know, protests, again, lined up. The, the National Guard, I think they deployed like 6,200 um, service men and women in, in Washington. There's a lot of stuff going on. So I, I think there's going to be a lot of, uh, unfortunately, um, mayhem, you know, and, and possible mayhem for the next uh, several day, days. And it doesn't just quite look like uh, Trump is going to uh, bow out gracefully. As everybody saw uh, over the weekend, uh, you had, you know, a lot of these major platforms uh, deactivate Trump. You had Twitter, uh, you had Facebook uh, t taking them off. There was some others as well. So a lot of stuff is going on. And again, if you are uh, a Trump fan, you're very, very passionate behind him. Uh, if you hate Trump, while well, you're very, very passionate against him. So uh, this is definitely not going to end uh, in a very, very calm and orderly fashion. Uh, but hopefully cooler heads prevail. Now, the one thing that it does and it could translate into the market so far, uh, we've been negating the biggest pandemic in our generation, right? Uh, we've been kind of negating all the bad news. Um, you know, you're talking about people losing their livelihoods, some people live, losing their homes, people are getting sick, people are dying, and the market's at 52 week highs, or at least they were. And the most important part kind of going to the last days of the Trump administration is we want to see exactly if these stocks can continue to kind of brush off mayhem, okay? Or is it something that we saw today that could be a little bit murky? Now, again, if you've been watching this broadcast, even the last uh, month or so, I, I'm, I'm always very, very cautious of what can be happens next. Because again, if you traded during the dot-com era, you know at any given point after the euphoric move, it's very, very aggressive potential for the market to go lower. So if you guys remember the first day of uh, 2021, again, even though we wind up at, at the 52-week the highs and the all-time highs three days later, there was an aggressive pull. So these pulls come uh, at any given time without any warning. But again, this is the first day today when I started looking at charts. You know, I started looking at a lot of really good, aggressive non-beta names, right? Roku is still very, very strong. Uh, Crowd is still very, very strong. Getting, getting a lot of really aggressive uh, SPACs that are moving up on news like the CCIV went absolutely nuts today. STPK. Uh, continues to be a monster. You have small stocks, right? Very, very uh, small little names, uh, you know, just making big moves throughout the day. So you're, you're not going to, again, turn around and start identifying spots on charts, spots in sentiment that you could turn around and say, hey, look, I got to get out of this market. All hell is about to release. But if, again, if you do your homework every single night, and again, um, I encourage every, especially every new trader, you got to go through three to 500 charts a night. Even if you are a novice trader 
and you don't know what you're looking for, eventually muscle memory is going to kind of catch up to what you're seeing. And if you go through the heavyweight tech space, you can honestly see there's a problem brewing very, very fast. And I want, I want to kind of identify some names. Now, again, going into tomorrow, of course, there's a lot of names that still look very, very good. That's obvious. Uh, there was still very, very good aggressive value today, and we'll get to the individual pivots in a second. But let's talk about the names that did not participate and have not participated. And now we're looking at a very, very important tipping point, potentially. Again, there, again, nobody's talking about the end of the world, but again, you have to be prepared. You have to, you can't be caught off guard if you are uh, a shareholder in certain of these companies, these tech heavyweights that again had shown no absolutely no want or need to participate uh, in the last couple of months. They started the year again very, very lackluster. As the market's going up, with the exception of today's session, they just can't catch a bid, and that is a problem. The reason why there's a problem, because institutional money holds these shares. They hold these companies in high regard. And again, if they can't rally, it's the age-old question. Will the indexes pull these stocks up, or will these stocks finally pull and have the necessary ammunition put to pull the indexes down. And, and the names that I'm looking at are the names that everybody loves. I mean, look how close Amazon is. Again, as we say all the time, until they actually breach the bottom of the range here, this is just, you know, this is just the thought. This is just the setup. Until it actually happens, there is no trade. We're not anticipating. We're not trying to forecast what's going to happen next. We're just awoke, right? We're woke. We are, our eyes are open. We see potentially what can happen. And again, if you look at Amazon for the better part of even from the end of the summer, it's done absolutely nothing. And now if there is any pull again, the stocks that never rallied, well, they're going to be the ones that get pulled first. So again, not, you know, I'm not trying to sound any alarms, but again, if this thing starts violating the bottom of this range here, and you can see how close this is to the 50-day moving average, you could see a very, very aggressive pull. Look at Netflix as well. Right, Netflix, you know, had this big run traded into supply and, and has done absolutely nothing for the last couple of days. And now we're just teetering here under the 50 day moving average for three consecutive sessions. That's not a good thing, okay? That's not a, you know, nobody could turn around and say, well, it's holding up fairly well. Look at this double bottom. Again, there's not a lot of, you know, there's, there's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of good vibes when a stock is building a base under the 50-day moving average, under the five-day moving average, under the 10-day moving average. It's not a good thing, right? It's really not something that you're tur turning around if you're a shareholder, especially around this 500 level and say, everything will be all right. Look how it's holding. Well, it's holding until it's not. You got Facebook getting hit, right? And again, it has something to do, you know, it has more to do with Trump. But again, can you turn around and say, is this just an excuse right now? Is this kind of like the last straw that could potentially break the momentum, the sentiment back? Again, keep this in mind. Facebook has been going down, right? It hasn't been able to rally way, way, way before they, you know, they got rid of Trump off their platform. So again, it's something to really watch. Look at ZM again. You know, again, the biggest uh, ben, 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 excuse me, the big, biggest <laughs> say that five, five times fast. The ben, biggest beneficiary of the whole stay-at-home movement, again, it's failed to reclaim any levels, even short-term memories like the 10-day moving average. And again, look at this bear flag brewing now. So again, there's a lot of names that are still looking very, very good. But again, can you feel really comfortable if you trade big cap technology? Even you can make a case that Apple, right? Again, it's building now. It got rejected off the five-day moving average. And again, what's to say one more day this thing confirms can't start going lower as well? Even the video, which was an, a, a really big monster today. And again, we'll get to that in a second. It failed to hold that really big macro level. We really needed to see this level here hold this 850 level on a close, excuse me, 550 level on a close, and it did not. It put this inverted hammer, which is, again, it's just sell signal. So it's something that we have to be very, very conscious in. Uh, a name like Google that I really like to chart going into today's session, right? First close above the Bollinger Band. And again, it couldn't follow through. So again, we cannot be naive to sit there and say, Everything will be all right. These stocks will wake up. They always do. They'll always leave the market higher. Keep this in mind. We've been in a rabid bull market for a very, very long time. Nothing needs to happen. It doesn't have to happen in our time frame. It doesn't have to ha happen at all. It's all about price action. And right now, the price action is excuse me, very, very close uh, to really starting to show 
pretty aggressive potential uh, to the downside. So again, nobody's going into tomorrow bearish. Nobody's talking about the destruction of equity prices. We have to just be awake and understand that this is a possibility. And the cues is going to the cues are going to be a barometer today. Uh, they held you know the five ten day moving average, which is obviously bullish. Again, you could turn around and say, well, you know, Tesla had its first red down. Is was this the top on Tesla? I mean, it's, it's not. It's not. Uh, can it go lower tomorrow? Of course. Anything's possible. If it starts confirming the five-day moving average tomorrow, can it get a move into the 7, 750s? Absolutely. But, but again, look at the look at the run it's had. So anything's possible. You had a big decline today in Bitcoin. Are people going to start arguing head over, you know, hand over fist? Is, was that the top on Bitcoin? Again, stop thinking about tops and bottoms. It's not about being right. It's about being fiscally responsible to put yourself in a situation that you do not get caught with your with your uh, pants below your ankles. And it's very, very important. Uh, so again, going into tomorrow, I definitely like some, um, some long plays, 100%, until we start cracking down major uh, technical levels. I, I'm still bullish, but again, I see what's happening here. So you know, again, I'll give the bulls uh, the first candle, maybe two candles, but if I start seeing Amazon confirming, Netflix confirming, Facebook confirming, so forth and so on, it's very, very important to kind of shift gears and take off the rose-colored uh, glasses. So let's talk about uh, today's session. Uh, very, very aggressive. Uh, very pleased with the day. I know a lot of you guys did incredibly well. This was obviously the trade of the day. Uh, over the weekend, we heard uh, about Neo using uh, NVIDIA chips, I guess, in their blah, 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 cars, whatever the headline was. We knew right away, we've been talking about the top of the range on the video for a very long time. Uh, got long off this uh, 548 level, and it really got aggressive very, very quickly. Uh, 547, 551, and the video went nuts on one candle. Uh, it put up, you know, it put up like a $13 candle. Literally took out every range. But again, the problem is, and we just talked about this a few minutes ago, it failed to close above the range. Again, this is why we always take money along the way. You use break even as you stop. Again, we don't guess. We don't hope what's happened. You can always repurchase your shares at higher or lower prices. But again, as long as you're taking along the way, nobody's better than you. So great job for all you guys uh, who took the video. Hopefully, it will wake up tomorrow. Give us a sneaky pivot. Uh, tack, I still like this. Back-to-back uh, -back days... Um, Back-to-back -back days, ARK Investments has, has been accumulating a position in this thing. Uh, trade it, you know, again, this is not a day trading stock. You have to be very, very patient with this thing. Um, I still like it. I, I think it really needs a close, though, over this 1850 level uh, to be very, very strong and confirm that middle range. Uh, RIDE went absolutely nuts. Uh, congratulations for all you guys who caught this. Uh, 2385, 24 needs to build. Look at what RIDE did today. What a monster move. So, it took out this whole level here, 23.85, uh, 24, and traded almost to 29. Just an absolute monster of a move. Uh, Zen, nice little move here. Got upgraded today with a price target of 162. I believe it was a Piper. Uh, 150 needs to build. Here was Zen, right? Here was Z-E-N. Uh, so it took out the 150, traded all the way up to the 153 level. Still looks really, really good. Again, not a lot of people uh, follow this name, so the shares weren't weren't really in a lot of pressure uh, when they started pulling a lot of names. So again, beautiful move on Zen. Uh, Google, again, never got close to the 1800 level. They pulled it after a very strong move. Uh, Root never got to this uh, area. I still like it, 1985, 20. Um, I still like this VERI off that 39 level. Uh, we talked about it a little bit over the weekend video. Uh, again, just an inside day, had a big, big move. Fit starts reclaiming this channel here. <laughs> Uh, should go higher, so let's keep an eye on that. Spotify it's not, didn't get to that area as well. Uh, Nvidia just a fantastic, fantastic move. Uh, traded as high as almost 559. So again, you don't need many guys. That's the that's the whole point. You don't need many trades uh, to make yourself whole. And the video was just absolutely awesome today. Uh, AMD, you got big buyers coming in. Um, you know, for the 100, 101. Uh, Short-term expiration calls, 98 heavy supply needs to reclaim. Again, not a big move on AMD, but a move, right? You had a move. It took out the 98 level, uh, and it went to 99 and a quarter before it got pulled as well. A lot of these semis uh, continue to be uh, very, very strong. Uh, VERU, again, not a big move, but nice little move indeed uh, for $10 stock. 990.10 uh, needs to build. Here was VERU, right? Took out this whole 990.10 level, traded up to 10.30. Again, you know, this is still the highest close. I still think this thing goes higher. Uh, again, nice little move there. Nothing big. Um, Zen take on the way up. 
uh, breaking out again, 100, 100 calls coming in there as well. Uh, Arc is buying today, killer move. Riot is going crazy. Nvidia again. Here's the here's the point that it just didn't close over the 550 area, uh, which is me very very important. And nice little move here uh, after the close. Uh, Siffy potential after hour play if the volume kicks in above 285 290. Siffy went nuts here after the close, which is very very aggressive. Uh, here's Siffy after the close traded all the way up. You can see here it traded all the way up to the 355 level. Uh, so nice move on Siffy as well. So again, we're going into tomorrow. Continue to be bullish, but I am keeping a very, very close uh, eye on Amazon, on Netflix, on Facebooks of the world. Because again, guys, if they start pulling after that first candle, it will confirm today's ranges. Guys, God bless. Have a great night. Stay safe. And I'll see you all tomorrow.